I think a lot of interesting things did happen this week. Despite the chapter being pretty short and it being mostly combat focused, I liked it. I ended up giving it an 8 out of 10. Please like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell down. See the goals to the 13 month series is and get you, and you can stay notified. And honestly, I don't want to ramble. I don't want to go on too many tangents. I don't know that there's too many things I really want to sink my teeth into, but we'll kind of just go through it in order, so to speak. And then <clears throat> we'll see how we feel about it. How did you guys feel the chapter? Did you like it? What was your favorite panel in the chapter? Your favorite piece of dialogue? And what did you write, rank it and or rate it out of 10? So Gus Dang and Tramare are facing off. And he's like, you're going to kill me? You're crazy? You? You're going to break the promise that we made? Um, that we... That we were, what did he say exactly? We promised never to hurt each other no matter what. Now... He seemed to be more upset about the promise than him being like, Traumare has come into my like to my home and messed with my family and got me in this war, whoop de whoop. So that promise is probably an important thing from that day again. I wish that we would get more information and start having to work with all these very fake statements, but all things considered, it's cool it worked and that starts to starts a conflict. So he starts to attack him. Now one part that I kind of is my like my biggest nitpick and it's not a chapter nitpick it's more of a tower god nitpick is the power scaling and the overall sense of danger and gravitas and the way we hyped up family heads for so long i think at this point i have scaled that back my expectations of them are much lower from a power standpoint i don't have any problem with the characters i've enjoyed hari han and yon lee rang who was once the yon hannah for what we've seen i believe kuna duan the data could have done Zahard, Data Zahard, Lopobia, Tramare, and Pobeda Gustang. I've enjoyed them all. I don't think a single one's a bad character. They're all written well enough or they're serviceable enough in terms of how much involvement they've had thus far. The problem is Based on how we used to see and how it was built up, I don't think they're living up to expectations. I think this should have been like a run on site type beat. Like, oh my god, a family head is here that we're not allied with, allied with, cut, dip, not, I'm going to get the, the, the king piece back. And he's like, no. And it's like, I'm going to punch you. Like, oh, if, she, if, he, if he hit me with that attack, I would have died. I'm like, really? That would have killed you in Dorsey? You're a princess of Zahar. You have a stronger body. So, I'm, so I guess maybe she's not ranker level. Not that ranker means anything to me at this point. I only care about who you are in relation to your title. Not that you're an upper ranker, higher ranker. She, even a blue hole, to be honest. I don't really care about that. I just care about if you say you're um, Eska to Paris. Okay, I'm interested. That's different. But if you just say, oh, I'm high ranker Weber Vitamin. I don't give a damn. Until you show me something. That's how much we've trivialized. Tri trivialized. <laughs> Sorry. That's how much we um, trivialized rankers, all things considered. So, yeah, there's that part. So, they're running around. She almost got it back with Bong Bong. Bong Bong's pretty OP. It is teleportation. And then he says that we have a chance as long as we still have the king. Does that mean the game, the chess match, is still somewhat active and in order? Like, how is that going to work? I don't want to see this chess game. I don't care about it. But then again, the administrators and I think floor rules and whatnot are involved. So maybe the game has to see a conclusion or both parties have to find a way to stop it. But Bellarier with Enkidu seems to be confident that he can do something as long as he has the chess piece, the king piece. So we'll see. And at that point, Gustang and Trauma are fighting. And this is probably my favorite little stretch of the chapter. He says, Holland, lock that lunatic up. Using Holland from last chapter, us learning he was an experiment to house all ancient Shinue. He creates a living labyrinth with some human centipede type beat, type beat, type beat, type shit, type shit, where they're all biting to the chill to lock him in an ever growing, always healing, ever moving, living maze. The same way Gustang would trap trauma in a maze of books or whatever to find the answer to get out. I thought that came full circle in a very meaningful fashion. I highly enjoyed that. That was super dope. But even more so, I love that Gustang tagging Holland's tongue with the whole speech stuff and burning it came full circle. So he burned the maze or labyrinth from the host. And the host is not there. It all crumbles to dust. 
that was amazing because trauma ray used a move that would trap him not kill him at least for the time being and then Gus then goes up to him and is like, yo, nigga, <laughs> he didn't say that. But the fact of the matter is, I think he slapped him the way that he did disrespectfully and not with too much power. I don't know how much it hurt in trauma. I assume it didn't hurt him that much to be like, this is not me playing around. I'm not trolling. This is not a game. This is not some, we're going to get into an argument or I go home. You or me are dying today. Put your fucking paws up, nigga. Let's scrap. And I think Trauma Ray is going to get over the mental hurdle of the promise and having to fight him and be like, all right. Very well then. And on some anime gimmick, I don't know, take off his cloak and get serious. Be like, hmm, Trauma Ray. I mean, Gusta, you're serious, huh? <laughs> ha! <laughs> I don't know, like, and like throw that off. Like, I don't know, I don't know what's about to happen, really, for real. Sorry, I messed up my whole like get up, but yeah. Actually, let me let me fix myself. But yeah, cool chapter. I liked it. It was shorter than I would like. I want the fight to keep going, keep the focus here. If you're gonna switch focus or divert, maybe go to like. Don't go to Bam and Dumas for go for love's sake. For God's sake, I don't want to see that. I do not care about that fight in any way, shape, or form, or any capacity. It's not entertaining. It's not moving me. I don't care about the outcome. I just don't like it. Just, just, just to keep me away from that. But I can do um, Fraud Watch Keating versus I got the power of a tree. I don't act like a tree. Lobodon, or maybe something Yamal's doing, or whatever. Maybe Loose Lek looking for whatever he's looking for, or just kind of biding his time. Or Mazino looking for the boss or something, the captain. That'd be cool. So that's where I'm at. I'll leave it there for the time being. Thank you guys for listening. This might be the only Tower of God video for the week aside from when I post the TOG stream where I read the um, your hot takes for the week. I don't have too much to say about this chapter and I'm going to kind of just take it easy this week so I can get some other stuff done. But y'all be safe. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening as always. Take care of yourself and each other. Yes, sir.